I joined because I just love being in a team where everybody kind of has the same likes and differences because we all kind of are nerdy and like to game and have fun. I believe in STEM, I think it's great for kids. It's hands-on, it teaches them how to problem solve. I want to be a robotics engineer when I grow up and I feel like this will give me a good, A, a good thing to put on my college application and B will give me a good jump start on programming and building robots. catch our live action make sure to tune in our twitch channel miss clicks there you can come in the chat box and interact with us while we play some games and if you want to follow us on social media you can visit facebook twitter or any other platform at miss clicks or check out our website at www.missclicks.com where you'll find tons of other goodies that support our mission There. I'm Anna Prosser Robinson. Anna Prosser Robinson. Anna Prosser. Anna Prosser Robinson. I'm Anna Prosser. Today we'll be taking a look at the Sony Bravia XBR 55HX929 55 inch 3D LED TV. Dare you to say that three times fast. You just won an award for being a best selling author. You're holding your quilly. How are you feeling right now? I'm ecstatic. This was wonderful. As someone who's been here since Brood War and probably has a really good idea of what this community and this game is all about, what would you say to those people who may be just joining us? What's important about StarCraft II? Alexa, how old are you? Four. Four years old? And you're just a supergirl, right? Is she your favorite superhero? Obviously the console war has been huge. Everyone wants to talk about PlayStation versus Xbox One and then some people want to talk about why isn't the Wii U in that conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you just got slammed. Well, I slowed down. I was like, this is it. This is where it ends. <laughs> At a zombie run, people running from fake zombies and curled up in a ball on the ground. <laughs> if you're not getting pushback, if you're not making people uncomfortable, then you're not doing your job. And if you're in the public eye and you're not getting negative criticism, then you're probably not very interesting. Anna has described herself as a part-time nerd. Not only does she love sci-fi novels, but in her spare time, she hosts video gaming tournaments. She is one chic geek. Oregon. I've always loved creating media since I was a kid, and vlogging was a natural extension of, okay, I don't, I don't have a camera crew to follow me around, and I don't have people who want to you know, edit the random things I shoot, so it was a pet project for me to just make what I thought were funny videos sometimes and, and put them out there for people to either enjoy or make fun of. <laughs> it's okay, go play more StarCraft 2. I want nothing but the best from you. Feel it coming. Swarm. 
start from hat straight up to lair. It's makeup, it's easy, and YouTube is free. Look at all the things makeup can do. I know we're live. So welcome, ladies of the round table, Lord Live episode Hi. what? 67. 67 Ooh. guys. 67 with uh Miss Anna Prosser Robinson. Yes, I said it. He's here, sitting at the table. We are so excited to have you. <laughs> I'm really thrilled to be here. Thank you guys. And guys in the chat, sorry for the late start. We were trying out new video digs. Tell us if you like it. Do we look better? Do we sound better? It's like the, you know, million dollar man or woman, if you prefer. <laughs> the guest here, host here and maybe here or here and maybe here. You know this game, we play it every week. <laughs> we are missing Miss Tiff because she's getting married. Um, you know, we miss her dearly, but that's gotta be done. Um, she's gotta make an honest woman of her, Chris. So uh, <laughs> she was in the chat. If you missed her, you can tweet her. She'll be back in uh, two weeks. Well, another week after this. So um, we'll be having lots of pictures and all kinds of things on her social media, I'm sure. But in the meantime, Miss Holly's here. Hi, guys. Thanks for being here. Pixinator somewhere. Yeah. And then <laughs> producer Ian back there doing his thing. So if you happen to hear a man's voice, it's not in your head. It's really Ian. <laughs> God, it's it might God. Yeah. Be in your head. You never know. <laughs> but telling you to do bad things, it's not Ian. I take right. it back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are here to talk uh, to Anna about, um, you know, her role in our community, um, in in our gaming world and fandom. You know what we do each week. So let's start by having you, Anna, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, give us your elevator pitch. Tell us uh, what's going on. My elevator pitch has gotten longer these days because it's hard to describe all the things that I'm up to. Um, my full-time job is to work for Good Game Agency, which is the company that owns most notably perhaps Evil Geniuses, which is a pro gaming team, and then also Alliance and also works with quite a few other pro gaming teams and does creative media, especially within the sports and gaming space. So I do video production for them and have held various positions for them over the last, uh, gosh, four plus years now. Um, and you may have known me from back in the day when I helped set up the Evil Geniuses Lair, back when that was one of the first few team pro houses in, in North America. And uh, beyond that, I am a co-founder of MissClicks, which is an online community that's devoted to producing content and providing support and exposure for women role models in geek and gaming culture. With the idea that just right now there aren't, uh, there isn't enough visibility for the awesome role models that are women that are in the space. So we're trying to do everything we can to help them uh, succeed and therefore decrease the otherization of women that we experience in this industry. And then beyond all that, just by, by myself, for myself, I uh, freelance in front of the camera. I do a lot of tournament hosting and on-camera work and uh, that, kind of, that kind of stuff. So I am off to do that at Gamescom next week. And um, yeah, it's going to be great. Sound like my kind of woman can't help but keep busy. Uh, yeah, people just see the backside of you because <laughs> you're so busy. You're like, who's the back of her head? Because she's working. And we appreciate uh, you working so hard because, oh. you know, you're one of those people in the industry that has been, whether you know it or not, a positive influence um, and has kind of kept your nose to the grind, uh, understanding the platform that you do have and how people are looking to you to set an example. Uh, that is something to be said. So you should pat yourself on the back. We give you kudos, right, ladies? I needed to hear that today. Thank you. Yeah. We're watching you. Oh. <laughs> um, so with that being said, um, if you have not familiarized yourself with MissClicks, we do have the information for you. We have the Twitter. We have the Twitch. We got the website. And I believe there is an Instagram as well. <laughs> yes, um, so all the things. Fair, yeah. Social. Very yeah. social. You'll see down in the chat. Ian will be putting those. Yes, Mal. Ian will be putting those down in the chat. Um, for all you people who are new to the channel, thank you for joining us and coming in to visit and see what we're all about. 
Um, hit that follow button so you can keep tabs on who will be here next week. Each week is a different guest. Sometimes it's just the ladies because, you know, we roll like that. Um, yeah. And sometimes there might even be a man at the table. It happens. <gasps> Check out the YouTube. I can't I know. Thing. It's on the internet. <laughs> Um, so we're going to roll into the phase of our show where we talk about you and ask you some questions and just kind of get a feel for uh, some of your opinions on how things are going in the industry or how things may not be going in the industry and or games. It's just kind of a free for all of the things that we uh, want to talk about this week and, and pick your brain. So awesome. I'm preparing you. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> There's no buzzer. You can't pass. <laughs> can I use a lifeline? You can or... use a lifeline. Call a friend. Okay. Call a friend. Very good. Don't worry. I swear we're not going to be like Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> <laughs> That's after dark. Pixie might. <laughs> Different show. <No. laughs> now I will prepare you noobs in the channel that Pixie gets excited. Her octave goes up three times. It's a high pitched squeal and it's very loud. So please prepare your sound and your raid holes to be violated if this should happen. Warnings been said. All right. So um, let's, let's go with, let's go with Holly first. Okay. Well, I'm so excited you're here. Uh, something that I just think is so cool is that we are both in the Miss USA sisterhood. I competed in Miss California USA. Uh -uh. Yeah. The yeah, year that Alyssa awesome. Campanella won. So that's my year. Um, we did it the same oh, year. Oh, that's freaking awesome. I didn't oh my even gosh. <laughs> so yeah, so I won most inspiring and it was super fun and it was such a great experience. And so that's just like, we're kind of like sorority sisters, but like in a different way. So yeah, super cool. So cool. Um, so I just had to preface with that. Sorry guys, like has nothing, it does have to do with her, but it doesn't have to do with gaming. Sorry hey, guys. It makes you the women that you are. It's good. Yeah. It's good. Okay, because I I'm sorry. I know I'm supposed to be asked the questions, but people in gaming a lot of times uh, are really like, "Ew, you did a pageant. That's that's <laughs> terrible." You know. And I have a lot of answers for why it was really positively impactful on my life. Although I understand there are certain harms that pageantry has on many women's lives, but on mine it was absolutely positive. So, do you, did you have the same experience? And if so, why? It was seriously like, so I never thought of doing a pageant, had never done one in my entire life. Um, a guy had saw my modeling portfolio and he's like, I want you to come and audition for Miss California and do the interview. And I'm like, huh? Mm -hmm. So I went and they're like, we want you. And it was like totally very out of my comfort zone. And I'm kind of more like alternative. And I was like, I don't know how this is going to go. Like I have tattoos and like, is this a thing? And I'm a gamer. And so like, I was kind of like, eh. But then when I went, like orientation weekend alone, I loved all of the girls. I had like nothing negative to say about anybody. The girls that were like the big timers, like Nana Mer Merriweather, who went on to win uh, to be Miss USA, like she was talking to me on the bus. Like she, was, like I was just like one of her friends, and everybody was just super, super sweet. It was such a positive experience. Like now that I'm a Mrs., I've thought about doing like a Mrs. Pageant. <laughs> so like I loved together. it. Yeah, like I, I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. Such a good experience. Love I always it. tell people that I think like, just like any tool, right? Even a hammer. If you don't know how to use that tool, it can be really dangerous and it can be mm -hmm. um, harmful. But if you use that tool effectively, then it can be absolutely imperative to your success in building a house. So that's totally. how I saw pageantry. Anyway, that's totally derailing us from what Sorry, we are. Guys. It's all good. But this is I, the round table for a reason. You are allowed to ask questions and have rebuttals. This is what good. we do. So we appreciate that. <clears throat> Not a problem. Miss USA Sisters for Life. Woo. Mm -hmm. So that's super cool. Um, so, okay, so now that that is aside, um, but not, because I will focus on it the rest of the night. Um, <laughs> Actually, you're done, ma'am. Now we're gonna yeah. move on to Pixie's question. I'm done talking for the rest of the night. Because <laughs> there's just gonna be Miss USA show in here. Like, we're gonna bust out pictures. Um, so I know this is like a super hard question and I hate when people ask me this question. And so like, I was kind of like, eh, why am I asking her this? Because I hate this question. <laughs> but I feel like it's such a, it's a good question. Um, I want to know, like, what is one of your favorite things that you've done? Like one of your favorite experiences that you've been a part of, I know it's hard to pick just one. So you do not have to say that this is like your life favorite thing. Just mm -hmm. like one of your favorite experiences that you've been a part of and like why that was so awesome for you in the gaming industry. There are a lot of them. Um, and I guess the most, the most recent big one comes to mind because, um, 
we've been doing a lot with misclicks i mentioned early in the show and i've been working really hard on that for a long time and everyone who's involved in misclicks has it as a part-time job you know so it's like we're all giving it the the very little free time that we have and it got to a point this year where i kind of looked around and i was like is this is Miss Clicks accomplishing what we wanted it to? Is it really doing what we set out to do? Or are we kind of wasting our time or being naive about what we're actually accomplishing? And right as I started to have those questions, um, my co-founder Stephanie Powell and I got invited to go to the White House to speak about gaming because of our work with Miss Clicks, because they wanted our particular insight because of what we had done with that community. So I can't say too much about it, unfortunately. I would really like to share it with you guys, but being recognized on that level for something that I was doing purely as a passion project. Um, there have been there have been big tournaments that I've been at that were really cool, and there have been big winning moments in esports that have been really cool. But I think that was more validating than any of those for me mm. from a standpoint of where I am right now in terms of what I want to accomplish for the gaming community. So that would probably be the biggest. I think it's so good too that you like answered something that's like your personal passion too. Like it's not just like, oh, this is super cool. I've done this and this thing was awesome. Cause of course there's, you could name 10 million of those, but so cool that you pick something that just like really hits home with you. Something you're super ultra passionate about and why you really do everything else. It's like why you do it all. So I think that is freaking rad. Thank you. Yeah, it was no, go ahead. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Just I was going to say, um, a lot of times people ask me, you know, how can I get a job in esports or how can I, you know, become a pro gamer or those kinds of things. And I always say that you really need to identify your own strengths, like the value that you personally have that you bring to the table the most in the industry. And the one that I've identified for myself is is my communication um, and my ability to speak in front of people. And so to be able to do that at the White House is an extremely personal validation, like you said, beyond beyond whether I'm at a particular event or, or not. It's legit. If there's something to be said, um, if you're lucky enough to be able to make a career out of something that you're passionate about and also be able to feel like you're making change and making progress overall in the thing that you care about. Um, so that in itself is something you should be proud of, something that you should th make sure that you are very in the moment and present for every day because we don't get those moments um, normally in our everyday life. We do our nine to five, we do our part time or we do our things in life that we don't care about. But to be able to do it and, and inspire others is, is just phenomenal. And I can't say uh, enough about what you guys are doing over there and how much um, people like us appreciate it. Um, because we are uh, moving along the same and similar lines. Mm -hmm. So it does um, strike a chord over at the table mm -hmm. uh, or else we would have never asked you to come on the show. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> it, it's, um, how do you feel about, um, we won't say competition because I, I think what we've made known um, as far as our brand and our website and what we're doing is we are here to connect other sites together and start mm -hmm. a movement of working towards positive Mm -hmm. um, not compete against other industries, uh, people in the industry, uh, brands, women or men or otherwise. Um, we're not here to tear anyone down. We're not here to discourage anyone from starting a project or starting their own movement. Um, but how do you feel about the other fish in the sea and, and things that you see and the similarities and or about working with other brands? I know that sometimes it's very difficult to make those decisions because you want to protect the baby, the thing that you've created. Mm -hmm. um, but there's something to be said about working as a unit versus doing it all alone. Yeah, that's something that I think is really important for individuals as well, women working in the industry, because there's a lot of pressure to compete because there's this there's this idea of scarcity that there, there can be only one woman in each game. And, you know, I am the StarCraft girl. I am the CSGO girl, you know, and um, the rejection of that idea is something that's really hard and really important. So what I think about it is that I, I have worked very hard uh, personally to learn that you can be simultaneously disappointed that you or your organization didn't get an opportunity you wanted and also really excited and happy for the organization that you that did get that opportunity or the person that did get that opportunity because you're really happy for the overall good of the community. 
And I've experienced that especially on an individual level because of the nature of the freelance work that I do, where I may really want to be the host for this big tournament. And a friend of mine who is in the same industry and the same esport and the, and the you know same company might get that opportunity instead. So learning to be able to say, man, I'm really bummed I didn't get that job, but I am so happy you got that job. And then on the flip side, learning to be able to take that without being without feeling attacked as the person who did get the job, you know, to say like, ah, I'm really sorry you didn't get the job and I'm really happy I got the job. You know, those those two emotions can exist simultaneously. And I think that's something that a lot of people haven't examined a lot or had to examine a lot and uh so that's something i really encourage people to do and that it, it's really topical for me right now because it's something we've been working with um inside misclicks and things like that just kind of t trying to dissect how do we help people in those those conflictual situations to understand w how to deal with them yeah i think that one of the things i'm sorry pixie one of the things that we could do well is um setting the example of how to coordinate, how to work together and show that uh, maybe there are situations where we don't agree or that we can't work together, but doesn't mean that we need to tear each other down. And that's really important. I think it's, it's very important, and which leads into Pixie's next question. Yeah, so, you know, one of the things you said is, you know, not being negative towards one another mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. And, you know, I think a lot of female gamers have faced a lot of negativity throughout their history um from from online bullying and harassment to you know just people picking on us in a, mm -hmm. like real life um so you know what is something negative that you face personally um and how did you deal with it did you did you personally change it by changing someone's opinion or you know did you work to impact a larger change um in terms of of negativity that's mostly verbal you know like an online harassment type of thing maybe somebody tweeting something negative at me or, or chatting something negative at me or something like that um and i guess i want to preface this by saying there are things that cross the line where of the immediate reaction should be i call the police you know like if you're giving my personal information away, if you're violently threatening me or my friends or my family, you know, obviously those are situations where I do not engage whatsoever and I'm contacting authorities. But if it's some, something more inane, like girls don't play video games or, um, you know, you're not hot enough to be on camera, you know, those kinds of silly things. A lot of times I try and, and this, this shouldn't be the burden that's on the person receiving the abuse, right? But when I can, I try to say, hey, I know that you care about the gaming community and so do I. And I know you want it to be a really awesome place. And when you say stuff like that, you drive people like me away who are just trying to contribute. So please try not to. And then they probably come back with vitriol and it's terrible. But what I hope happens is that the people who see that interaction that aren't the perpetrators of it can see someone uh, positively reacting to that kind of stuff. And maybe it'll impact them in the future to not perpetrate those behaviors toward another person or to continue to be an ally and an advocate for women and, and be the one who steps up the next time to be like, hey, don't talk to her like that. Or, hey, we don't do that here. Or, hey, we have better ownership of our community than that. And that doesn't belong. Um, that said, I know that, that that's like a really nice way. Like, oh, yes, we should all be the bigger person and take the higher road. Ah, you know, like, and, and sometimes that doesn't work. And sometimes you shouldn't have to do that. And in those cases, I think the most important thing for me has been having a really strong network of other women who know the experiences I'm going through to just call and cry to and be like, this isn't fair. I shouldn't have to deal with this. And them to say, you're right. It isn't fair. You shouldn't have to. And you're awesome. And they suck. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I'm going to take this one back to your pageant days because, uh, you know, we're going to kind of. Yeah, I didn't expect to talk about that, so it's fine. <laughs> um, is there anything that you learned from that past experience that you've brought into your career or your or you took into esports that you know was something that just stuck with you and worked, um, and you kind of applied that to the rest of you know your legacy? There are so many things. I mean the obvious where I, I gained a lot of confidence in being on stage and especially with um speaking with large groups of people that I didn't know as a gamer I, I think I was a little introverted and it was really hard for me to just walk into a room and hello I am here I'm Miss Oregon USA and I just, <laughs> you know like 
So a lot of those obvious things. Um, and something I actually don't talk about much, but I'll, I'll share with you guys here at the round table, is that I think um, what pageantry did for me, perhaps uh, surprisingly, is that it really helped me own and accept my own beauty. Um, and I, I don't think I ever felt like a beautiful person until I met a lot of the people that I worked with in pageantry, not because I was wearing a crown or because I did this or that, but that I realized that all of us have all of us feel the same every the most beautiful women i have ever met in pageantry all of them had these things i hate this about myself i don't feel beautiful i don't feel this about myself and the tools that they gave me to understand and accept and embrace my own physical beauty have really stuck with me and i never felt as insecure again i don't feel like i am the most beautiful person in the room but i also don't feel like i am any I feel like I'm as beautiful as I feel, I guess. <laughs> is that, mm -hmm. I don't know how, if, if I'm ex explaining it the right way, but just they they empowered me by just being saying the way you are is so unique and so awesome. And yeah, we're going to teach you some makeup and some hair and some stuff to wear on stage. And that, you know, that was a valuable tool, but it was also just, I'm, I'm glad you personally, your unique self is here. And that helped me learn how to, to think of myself as beautiful when I never, ever did before at that. So what you're kind of saying is they told you that just to be you and that's yeah. good enough. Yeah, totally. basically. Yeah. So um, all you pageant naysayers out there, take that. Well, it was yeah. really funny, actually, because the first pageant I did, I did it as a joke. Honestly, I was like, <laughs> I did. They were like, you should come compete at Miss Portland. And I was like, ha, I am an enlightened person who doesn't believe in the objectification of women and I would never do such a thing. <laughs> and uh but then I was, it was right after I graduated from college and I was just finishing up a thesis and I was so bored. And I'm the kind of person that I don't like to be like, this thing is bad until I've actually tried it and really given it some research. And so I did Miss Portland and invited all my friends to come just laugh because I was like, it's going to be all these, you know, vacant women parading around in bikinis. It's going to be so stupid. But like you said, the, all of the women were amazing and kind and I'm, driven and compelling I'm, and like I had not had a lot of female friends before that so they really encircled me and then they again they taught me this like self-confidence that I had never had so the bikini competition comes around and I'm like woohoo fun and I'm just kind of like strutting on stage not having any expectation of winning whatsoever not having the the most impressive physique in the entire competition whatsoever but I won that portion of the competition and Miss Portland and when I talked to the judges about it later they were like we could just see that you felt empowered and confident and proud to be who you were and that's why we put the crown on your head and that was the the biggest light bulb in my in my entire pageant career like oh that's what it's about <laughs> it's awesome uh so once again guys uh hashtag for any chat questions is hashtag oopsie uh why Yay. um because we misclick a lot so oopsies <laughs> um <laughs> And so Holly will put it in the chat so you can spell it right just in case you need a little help. It's okay. <laughs> Ask your friends. I mean, I I live in the South. Like my education system is pretty messed up. It's cool. Not all of us. <laughs> uh, Remember, all views of the hosts of the round table are not views of the parent company. <laughs> I got my edge McKay. Any of the sponsors. <laughs> Everyone's just gonna cut us off. Uh, <laughs> Dang it, edible arrangements. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, no, edible arrangements come back. We yes. love you. And don't forget the refrigerators, the mini fridges yes, for Call of Duty. The mini fridges. That, need, that needs to be a we thing. Uh, oh, so man. speaking of this, just this question actually comes to us from our chat. Um, so, do you think that your recent trip to Washington D.C. influenced any of the minds on Capitol Hill about gaming? Hmm. I was encouraged by what I found there, which was that they were already thinking a lot about it. And usually when I speak to a mainstream organization about esports, there's a lot of, so people actually play video games for money? Like, you know, and I have to spend time explaining that. And that wasn't what I encountered there. They really understood kind of the ecosystem of esports and how valuable the industry is and how fast it's growing. And they were very interested in understanding the culture behind it. 
And so um, I don't know that I changed minds while I was there. I think I, I like to think that I helped um, guide an, a movement or an interest that was already there. So I, I was really encouraged by it. Yeah, and that's pretty, pretty epic. Did it, uh, did it kind of blow your mind? Was it a, an out of body experience for you to oh, take yeah. all of that in? Um, and it was very serious, I'm sure. <laughs> it was pretty incredible. I, I mean, we talked about pageantry. I talked a little bit about my educational background being in speech communication and I, I did some speech competition and things like that. So I, I could look back over all of the things I've kind of been working toward in my life. And, and had, the, I had this moment when I was at the white house where I looked around and I was like, this is the epicenter. This is where all of those things met in the middle. And so it was a very surreal out of body kind of feeling to be there. It, it, it was awesome. I'm sure there was some takeaway for you, but you really can't talk about it right now. Maybe we'll get the skinny oh, later, but it's okay. So when it bad. comes, when it becomes time, you're more than welcome to come back to the table, and we can have another conversation. Totally. Um, I'd love to. And, uh, you know, we, you know, if you're looking for some cross things on misclicks, you know, we're always available as well. Um, mm -hmm. Tabletop. I'm a learning. I'm not <laughs> so good at the tabletop. Uh, nobody in my house wants to play. My daughter plays very well. Um, but without, you know, the GM or the DM at the table, which would be my husband, it gets a little rowdy and there's no <laughs> one to be, no one to be in the middle. So, uh, uh things happen. Mom rage occurs. Um, so it's not good. Um, so I want to talk about, um, esports and women in technology, uh, in general, overall, um, we at the table have kind of come to a general consensus that there is a huge transition going on in our industry about more women being aware of, of um, the gender biases that are going on, um, how some of the numbers are skewed for things. Um, do you think because you have this platform and a voice, um, you got huge following on social media, of course, um, that you have some sort of responsibility to do something with that? I mean, obviously with misclicks, I would say yes, but I want to hear it from you. And do you consider yourself a role model? Hard questions. Yeah, you know, it's weird to say I consider myself a role model because I, I don't want to give the impression that I deserve to be um, imitated or, or anything like that. But when I say I consider myself a role model, emphatically, yes. What I mean is that I... I do not take the amount of eyes on me for granted. And I feel a great responsibility to those people, um, regardless of what they're looking at me for. If they're looking at me to imitate me, if they're looking at me to despise me, if they're looking at me to learn about my industry or to evaluate whether my gender has a place within my community, you know, I, I do, I feel a great responsibility there. Um, and there, there has been plenty of debate in the industry about, okay, I have a huge following, but that doesn't mean I want to be a role model and I don't have to hold myself responsible. There are a lot of people that feel that way. And I'm not one of those people. I feel like the more in the spotlight you are, the more responsibility you have to use that spotlight for making a positive impact. So um, again, I say that no, not saying I'm the most perfect example. I just try my hardest, you know? Good, good answer. Great. <laughs> Perfect answer. Honestly, you guys, I want to know what you guys think about that too, about being a role model, because obviously you are as well. Uh, I'm going to start with the youngest at the table, and I believe that's Pixie. Nope. <laughs> Not me. No? Nope. Oh, by one year, right? Wow, it used it's to be me. Pixie. Now it's messing me up. All right, well, we're going to go to Pixie anyway. <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> <laughs> what time to be young? <laughs> Just kidding, yeah. Pixie. Rack, this is I what know. happens when the older child is facing. <laughs> <laughs> Only child here. I don't understand. I'm sorry. Um, I think it's I think it's difficult. I, I think I feel it's a difficult situation. Um, and I feel like that partly because I am young. Um, I feel like it's hard to lead when. I feel like, um, from a personal perspective, it's it's hard for people who are younger to be taken seriously. Um, and so that's one of the things that I personally um, try to work on all the time is changing the perception 
of people who are young um, because we're the ones who are the next generation of creators and dreamers and inspirers. Uh, we're the ones who will really create the change that's being impacted now. Um, yeah. And I think, I think that's something that I really strive to do um, from branching out into different types of games to meeting people at conventions and having just a general conversation with them to, you know, going to my local game store and presenting fun and unique and different ideas. Yeah. Holly. This is a really hard one for me. Um, just because, yeah, just because I've been around for so long um you know i started playing like competitively when i was 12 years old and that was in 2000 no 19 no 2002 i was <laughs> 12 yes yes um and it was really hard because it wasn't the cool thing it wasn't you know i sat by myself at lunch and it wasn't cool to be a competitive gamer like it is now especially as a female i feel like it's gone in a totally different direction um, but what that does for me is it makes me want to strive to be that person today for people. Um, I have a lot of young girl fans, like one of the youngest that I play with almost every day. Her name's Carter and she's 12. Um, and I just love it because it reminds me so much of me when I was 12. And just to be able to have that, like I would have killed for that. Mm. Um, so I think I always focus on that. The negative side of it for me, like just thinking about all of that. It's like, I made a lot of dumb choices as a kid. And I think we've all been there. Um, so there's like still stuff that's going around about me that was like when I was 13, I mean, I'm 25 now. So it's pretty hard. I feel like, I feel like people hold on to things that I may have said when I was like 13, which I feel like is really unfair. Um, especially cause I feel like I've grown so much as a person. Um, so that's kind of like hard, but then it also pushes me to just continue like being myself and being who I am. And I'm kind of like a different perspective, I feel like in the industry on a lot of things, um, when it comes to like my personal life and other things kind of put together. So I think for me, it's just, it's so important. And then um, like Shravasta said, um, we're both in a film that's coming out next year on uh, women in the industry. And when I was chosen to be like the main person for that film, I just could not, I still can't wrap my brain around it because I am so young. And there's so many women in the film, in my opinion, like Shravasta and others that have done so much more than me and have experienced so much more than myself. So I just feel really privileged to be able to even have half of a voice in anything. Yeah, I'm gonna echo what you guys have both said because for me, it's a different perspective. Um, being a lifelong gamer, loving games from an early age, back in Atari days, um, and then feeling <laughs> that I had to pull away from it because I was a girl. Because when I um, was into gaming, you know, my mother was like, that is the devil and you shall stay away from it. And there's none of that for you. It's for boys. Even though she brought the Atari in the house, right? It was just like, take it away. Um, and then boys were like, we don't want to play with you because you're a girl. Um, and then I came back to it, you know, my early twenties and was like, yeah, I'm rocking this. I'm going to do, you know, cause you're, you're headlong and strong when you're in your twenties, you're gonna do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Um, and then was almost a closet gamer because I didn't play online as a girl. And then my daughter got into it and I was like, whoa, this is a whole different experience for me. This is something entirely different. This scares me, this industry and what's going on online. So I can completely understand where Pixie's coming from saying, you know, it's different for her than it is for me and her experiences and why she wants things to change. And I really wholeheartedly believe in the longevity of our industry and our community from the aspect of having young creators because my daughter is one of those young creators. And then for Holly's experience, the aspect of making sure that young people understand that everything they do online will be there forever and it's going to haunt you. So make sure that so sure. you're socially responsible with your social media. 
Um, so for me, I've got all kinds of irons in the fire trying to make sure that I'm setting the example because I have a daughter in the house. Mm -hmm. um, and she watches these shows. Mm -hmm. She listens to what comes out of my mouth and goes to school or pizza to her little girlfriends. Um, yeah. When we go to conventions and we're doing panels and she's there with me or we're doing autographs or we're doing whatever, she sees that and she has the dialogue to be able to hold a conversation with someone if her peer group to say, I'm a girl and I can play what I want because I can get your behind in some CSGO. That's why I'm going to play. Yeah. So it, it's very um, interesting for all of us. We have different reasons, but the common denominator is we love what we're doing and the fandom that goes along with it. I think um, that's all I have to say about that one. I know we got a lot of chat think, questions. Thank you guys. I think like the best role models are the people who look at everyone they interact with as a role model to them. Mm -hmm. At least yeah. respecting others. From all yeah. of those conversations. I think you're right. And I mean, male spy 007 in chat actually said, um, was talking about saying, you know, not speaking for every woman. And I think some of what kind of you both were saying reminded me of how important it is to recognize that being a role model doesn't mean being perfect. It means owning who you are and who you have been. Because someone could look at like you said something you said at 12 and be like man i said something stupid when i was 13 and i can now relate and not feel like i don't belong here anymore you know so even the experiences we right. have that we can look back on and wish we could change can also be inspiring and that's part of being a role model is being fallible and being real and having ownership of being mm -hmm. human you know mm -hmm. it's a really great point that's actually super encouraging to me it's so hard coming across people that just like it's like, dude, I mean, I'm sorry I've been around for a long time, but like, you got to talk to me now. Like, don't mm. take so, and taking people's words for stuff on the internet is just, I feel like Especially it's out of context. You know, that's like, like a yeah. lesson you have to learn in life in general um, is that, you know, accept yourself for who you are and your faults and learn from those things. And if you can learn from those things, there were never mistakes. They're just a life lesson that you've learned. So roll with it. You know what I mean? Do you, is what I say. That's what I tell my daughter. Do you. Not people don't make perfect. mistakes we make creative errors right <laughs> so let's hit some of those chat questions up miss pigs yeah so um uh one of our chat questions is how did everyone come together to kind of form miss clicks and let me ask who is that from um uh, is it male spy I didn't write down who I think it was. It was dark. I just copy pasted the question I think it was dark so if you if I you saw it on, if you ask that question, we appreciate it, and we'll try I'm to get your name. Go ahead. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. Sorry, I'm it being worse. Oh, Mister Oh, Mister J. Was it Oh, Mister like, J? Yes, it was Mister J. Okay. All right. Yes. So, oh, Mister J. I got you. Um, the Miss Clicks was co-founded by Miss Harvey, who's a Counter Strike player, Liv in Pink, who at the time was a StarCraft streamer and now is a developer for Ubisoft. Stephanie Powell, who at the time was a freelance social media consultant and now works for Roll20 tabletop gaming app, and myself. And at the time, we were all very deeply involved in esports, and we got really frustrated by looking around us and seeing these awesome, compelling, energetic women come into the scene, and we would meet them at a con and then see them once or twice again. And then all of a sudden, a year later, we'd look around and they'd be completely gone. And we were looking around us and feeling still, especially at that time, like there were very few women at these events. And we really wanted to have those friendships and those networks with these people that eventually were opting out of, of the culture. And we theorized that the reason for that was that they didn't have a the support network of either mentorship or just emotional support or friendship or whatever it was that would keep um, keep some of our male counterparts there in gaming. And also that there weren't enough visible female role models for them to look at and say, okay, if she can do that, then I can do that. Um, and so the reason that we banded together and formed Misclicks was we thought if we could get some women's faces out there doing things that people didn't necessarily assume women would do, and then also provide as much support and exposure as we could for the role models that existed within uh, geek and gaming culture, that we could hopefully get some of we could lower that attrition rate and keep some of those women around and therefore increase the number of women in the industry and therefore decrease the otherization of women and therefore decrease abuse and assault and all of those other problems so 
that was the theory started with a Dungeons and Dragons show on our live stream channel, which has been awesome. long standing. And then uh, now we've that's been joined by Heroes of the Storm tournament broadcast, a Heroes of the Storm talk show, a uh, board games talk show, a um, what am I missing? Oh, cosplay cabaret, which is a performance and creative uh, how to show. And then we're working on three other shows, and I'm hoping to get more heavily uh, esports visibility in there as well. Yeah. Well, um, I can say that we're just excited. Um, we, you know, we're watching all the shows. If you haven't <laughs> seen us creeping up in that channel, um, you know, we kind of hang out and see what's going on. And um, Mark. like you said, we have an open invitation for anybody to come on over and uh, be a guest or guest host. We do that quite a bit, swap out guest hosts from time to time. Um, like when Tiffany's not here, we pull someone else in um, because the show format is so much fun. Uh, we hope we're enjoying it so far. Uh, I think we have some more chat questions, a couple. Yeah, we have a ton of them. All right, roll. Um, so oh. what are your future plans as far as advancing the prospect and admirations in the world of gaming? Um, my personal ones or or what Miss Clicks is doing, did they say? I believe it's personal. I would... My problem has always been trying to do so many things that should have my entire focus hmm. um, and and therefore not being able to do any of them as completely as I would like to. So my future aspiration is unclear, but ultimately I would like to be able to financially support myself doing one thing really, really well that I'm really, really passionate about. And I would... I would hope that eventually that means I can still work within esports and with evil geniuses, but maybe remotely and maybe in a more, um, maybe I can be everywhere at once. <laughs> that, you know, that's my aspiration to be everywhere at once. I could give you two words that'll help you out with that project sure. management. <laughs> if you can be good at it because then it allows you to utilize the tools in your toolbox to be able to do the things that you do well. Um, and there's something to be said about having the structure and the people there to support you so that you can get to that goal. Um, I know you know that more than anyone else because mm -hmm. you've learned that along the way. Um, I do it too. I stretch myself a little bit thin on something um, because I'm so gung-ho and inspired on something else and I, I feel like there's an opportunity. Um, but lesson learned, you really have to be super hyper-organized to be able to be in this industry alone, let alone be able to have your own company run your own brand. Um, right. A lot of what you guys don't know is this every week, let alone a different show every day, is a lot of moving parts. It's a lot of work. Um, just try the email alone. You know, <laughs> let me tell you, it's flooded and you got to sift through all that stuff. Keep those chat questions coming, guys. Remember to use that hashtag. What did you say? Oopsie. Oopsie. Yes. Oopsie. Okay. Yeah, I can't I say it like to... that. To finish that out, though, I know that was a kind of pie in the sky question, but a short term goal I have and that I've been working on a lot is I've been casting Heroes of the Storm because there are very, very few women broadcast like uh, sports casters, shout casters for esports. Yes. And so I wanted to mm -hmm. prove that to myself that I could set that goal and achieve it and then also be out there as a face that like, hey, girls can cast too. So myself and Gillyweed over on this clips have been doing that. So my short term goal is to cast a major tournament. For heroes wow. shout casting alone boggles my mind it's amazing so it's, much fun it's a sport yeah. on itself i mean is there anything that you did to prep for that um you know if someone's interested in doing it someone's interested in getting into the industry and doing casting you know what advice would you give them well there's obvious pieces like you have to play the game a lot you've got to study the game those kinds of things the biggest hurdle for me was just starting to do it like just being like okay i'm a caster now and i'm going to do it and recognizing that you're going to be bad at it for a long time <laughs> and that you just have to do it anyway because yeah. the only way you get at it is through practice so i just got really lucky the people at heroes hype um welcome gilly and i over there into their amateur series as amateur casters nice. and the fact that i practiced at least two times a week being a caster on a broadcast was what got me past the point of i'm an amateur caster to i am a caster so taking the leap finding somewhere to either either through another tournament or just putting it on your own youtube channel or something and saying i am a caster now this is going to suck for a while 
here's my best work and it'll be better next week and better next week and better next week. Did you listen to yourself? Did you, you know, listen back? <laughs> yeah, oh. it's hard. It's hard to listen to yourself, but I, I did, especially at the beginning. And then the other thing is I would ask other people I trusted for feedback, not look at chats or forums or anything like that, but I would say, Hey, I know you watched that broadcast and I trust your opinion. Could you give me some feedback? And that was the most valuable. <laughs> yeah, I don't watch our shows back either, so I get. <laughs> yeah, shoutcasting. Shoutcasting is no. like an entirely different beast. It's so weird because not only do you have to be fun and entertaining and engaging, but you also have to talk about something else simultaneously. <laughs> and so you have to like you have to talk about everything that's going on in the game, and then you have to roll down a joke, and then you have to keep yeah. going. And, and it's just, it's so like multifaceted. It's insane. I shellcasted when I was 13 for Steel Team 6 Counter-Strike game. Um, and back then it was like all like organized through IRC and I was DJ XO. Yes, this is embarrassing. <laughs> I know. That's cute. Um, but I did like three, I did like three matches and my hardest thing was like, I was so like, I just wanted to be playing. So like, I'm like, oh no, he's coming up mid. Oh, he's throwing an eight. Okay, we got two coming up cat. Oh, they're gonna be, like, I just wanted to play. So like, I just, I blew at it because I was like, I was a little too into it. But my good friend Freak, he's like a huge, he works for Riot and he's one of their casters for League. And he was on my Counter-Strike LAN team for five years. So him and I are like really tight and he's amazing at it. And it fits his personality so well because of those things that you said, Pixie. He's like, he is that person and he just kills it every time. So good. Uh, and so this is a this is an awesome chat question. It actually goes to all of us. All right. I think oh, I'm scared. I've never had one of these, by the way. Oh boy. Um, so do any of us participate in actively encouraging the younger generation of girls to participate in gaming and or technical careers, or do we know of anyone who targets this age of audience? Have you checked the website? Because yeah. I think it's a great answer to what we're doing. And I'm not saying it to be condescending. I mean, we can go in depth. We have a lot uh, to do with the younger generation and the industry and inspiring them um, and or encouraging STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and math, and art or STEAM. Um, so yeah, head on over to lordnation.com and you'll see all the things that we do um, in the community, at conventions, and so on and so forth. Um, so I'm going to step off the soapbox and roll it over to Anna and let her answer that question. Well, that was basically my answer is I was going to say, check that out because that's a really good place to start. And there are lots of organizations, um, Girls Make Games, Girls Who uh, Code, yeah, you name yeah, it. Girls Who Code, those kinds of organizations are great. Um, and I actually have been looking to be, to get more involved on that end because my, my focus has been very much fix the status quo um, for the people who are in esports right now. And I've, I've often spewed this like, well, every, you know, 92% of kids from two to 17 play games now, male or female. So it's going to fix itself once they get here, but we have to fix what's wrong now. But that's a short-sighted, that's a short-sighted opinion. And I've been, I've been working on getting more involved myself. And I, I've been really interested in what I can do to um, work in schools. One thing that I did was I had an after-school club for at-risk kids that we just played video games together. And uh, the school was really excited about it because those at-risk kids didn't want to go to the chess club or the ballroom dancing club or any of the other things that were there, but they were really excited about video games and especially somebody who was actively involved in the video gaming industry. So um, aside from a lot of these amazing organizations that you really should get involved through and with, if you're looking to promote those things, I would say go to a local school and ask, can I volunteer and can I work with kids who like games? And especially, can I focus on recruiting young girls? Um, I think that would be awesome. So Anna, one of the things that you could do to get involved is, you know, like we talked about the Lort Nation speaker panel list and volunteer just saying yeah that's what there. that's what i meant when uh, i said that i've been looking to get more involved is i i've yeah. been inspired by what you guys are doing uh, just so you guys know some of the things that we do at a community level is go to schools speak with community groups such as girl scouts boy scouts um we worked actually uh, our brand and myself work collaborative collaborative let's say it collaboratively <laughs> with uh, Girl Scouts to help create the Girl Scout coding patch that now is in effect. 
Um, so Girl Scouts get a coding patch for coding. Scouts. So that's been awesome. Um, so and other things like that that you know to inspire <laughs> girls and boys um, to to just get into the industry. Um, we're interested in coming to your local events, coming to your local city and inspiring the young people and getting them to understand that what we do, they can do and beyond, um, yes. you know, especially the indies, you know, indie studios are looking to uh, get support and feedback and who do they want it from? What is it? Eight to 27, at least, you know, I'm saying mm -hmm. us older people too, but that's the, that's where they want to know. Are you playing the games? Do you like the games? Uh, are you encouraged to create a game? Um, and I think Holly, you're doing that in, in your work every day, correct? Yeah, um, like my personal work? Yeah. Okay, sorry, I was like, personal work or gaming work? Which work? Well, both, um, really. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, I'm a, for those of you who don't know, I'm a children's pastor. So I work with kids and um, I'm always like the cool one that's like, oh my gosh, she's a children's pastor, but she games. <laughs> but then when I'm gaming, it's like, you're a children's pastor and you're coding me. This is odd. So it's a little cooler on the other side because all like the third through fifth grade boys that come that are like too cool for life. I'm like, hey, bro, you want to 1v1 me? Counter-Strike when we get home? Yes? No? <laughs> so <laughs> boys like love it. And then the young girls love it too because they see, they see, oh my gosh, someone that I look up to as a leader is like into the stuff that I'm into and thinks that this is cool and that this is, there's opportunities for me just like she's had opportunities for her. And I think that's so important just to, I think, and I think Anna, you've totally said this with everything you've said tonight is like, it's not just you that's had these opportunities. Like you're like, hey, I've had these, but you can too. Like, let's get this rolling for everybody. And I think that is such a strong message that you have because it's so inspiring to every young girl that they're like, hey, like I could do this too. Like, look at her, she's beautiful. What she's saying is great and I can do this. Like, I think that's fantastic. There's nothing better than that. Ms. Pacey? Uh, so I actually started on a really interesting adventure um, recently. So I've been working with some local coders to work on some game programming to actually create a curriculum-based software um, that is usable in homeschool. It's literally a video game. You sit your child down and they play it and they learn everything they need to learn for their curriculum. That's amazing. It's legit. Almost like Classcraft, which was the awesome show we did a couple weeks ago. Yeah, it is. It's it amazing. Is Classcraft, except for the differences, is all of the game content is actually in the game. Right. Kind of Sims, but you're learning to actually count money in game. Right. And get those level up skills. That's so cool. All right. Any more chat questions where we roll on to hot topics? And then that would be Holly beating up those keys if you want to. Sorry. Work. PC gamer life and I'm on my laptop with my mic. Sorry guys. <laughs> if I was next to my husband right now on my actual computer, you guys would be hearing, go B, he's B, pick up the bar, bro. So I'm over I have here to say, while he's playing Counter-Strike. Anna's husband's back there gaming and I, ha I have to ask, is he using the Razer Naga or the Belkin Nostromos, whichever. He is recently re-sponsored by SteelSeries actually. So he's- Ooh, What's he doing? Yeah! Yeah! What's he got on on the on the game pad over there? Because I have a, a razor, which was well was razor now it's Belgian, but uh, it was awesome. All the steel series. He's using a sensei. I'm gonna have to I have that mouse. mouse. I I like the sensei, but it's a little big for me, so I use a Kinzu. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check it out. My husband's been asking for some toys, and I'm like, hmm, let's see. Uh, just steel down series. Down there, baby. I'm gonna give him like a virtual internet high five for having the same mouse as me. Yeah, Steel Series, if you're listening, you. play, play too, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, last chat question of the night. Let's make it a goodie. Uh, oh, I know a good one. I saw a good one. Go for it. Someone asked about what, Anna, what do you think about toddler pageantry, aka uh, toddlers and tiaras? Oh. This is where I get really PC. Uh, so 
again, I compare pageantry to any other tool, like I said, like a hammer. It can have benefits and it can have negatives. And I think as a parent, it's your job to very heavily scrutinize the activities that you are exposing your children to on an individual basis to find out whether your child is capable of using that tool for good. Because I have seen and known many incredible young women who have grown up through youth pageants, um, specifically not glitz youth pageants. There's a difference between the ones that celebrate performance and speech and um, stage presence as opposed to their looks, um, who I've seen really benefit from them. I can't say that I personally am sure I would be comfortable with my children competing in child pageants, but I would not condemn a parent for choosing to put theirs in a child pageant if uh, it was something that they felt like was benefiting their child. Um, I did do speech competitions that were similar to pageants when I was a kid, and it was invaluable to me uh, in in a lot of the things that I still do today. So I can't speak for your children. Uh, I am wary of those competitions, but recognize that they work for some. Very PC answer. <laughs> All right. That wasn't even practiced or rehearsed. That was <laughs> So can you tell us again how you feel about Honey Boo Boo? Uh, <laughs> I just think she's cute though. I'm sorry. I do watch Toddlers and Tiaras. I'm like on the I same boat. Tom- I, mean, I love the show. I but it, you know, it, myself. I do like it. It totally, it comes down to parenting. I mean, I grew up dancing since I was two years old on stage with like full makeup and all that. And like, for me, like it wasn't detrimental, but like every child is completely different. Right. So it's like, well, I mean, we it's talked like, about it a lot. It's like, we talked about it a lot. Sorry, I keep cutting you off. Go, go. It's like go. the difference between dancing for like Abby Lee Miller and having her yell at you all the time and your parent being like, here, let's take you to ballet class so you can have fun and meet people. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. Speaking totally. from and like parent's perspective, I'm going to give it to you because I got that in my pocket. Um, it is all about your child and what they are encouraged or inspired to do. It is, um, they are a young person, they are a little person, and they look to you for the uh, reassurance. And if you make it okay, then it is okay. If you make it hard, it will be hard. So have that relationship with your child, have that one on one, make sure there's quality time and everything else will fall into place. Good um, advice from a mama right there. Just saying, mine <laughs> is a force to be reckoned with at whew, almost 13, almost 14. I'm sorry. And I created this monster. I've created this <laughs> and it scares me. However, I am not at all scared of her becoming a young adult and going into society and being able to take care of herself that she's got down pat. Um, I fear for the young man who shall suffer the wrath of heartbreak when that comes. But hey, Holly, let's go into what you got, girl? Okay, sorry. Chat is like blowing up right now. Sorry. Right. Okay. I know. I'm like type in like whoa, focus, focus. Okay. This I don't know what's in this, but it's making me psycho. Aegon's laying down the band hammer, just so you know. Here it comes. Sorry. Uh I, I hope I don't get the old graphic. I know. I hope I don't get banned. Okay. So Yeah, Holly. I don't know if you guys quit trolling. I know, I'm such a troll. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw this, but Microsoft is working on streaming PC games to Xbox One. So Uh since Windows 10 was released on Wednesday, which, sorry, side note preface, Chris downloaded and it blew up all of his games. Like we were playing matchmaking games. (laughs) kept getting all tabbed with like random comment boxes of like, this picture is trying to, it's like, what? We're playing a game here. Hello. And we died multiple rounds because of it. And now he's back to Windows 7. Side note. Um, So Windows 10 was released. So now Xbox One ones are able to stream games to PCs. And Microsoft's also working on streaming PC games to Xbox One consoles as well. I think this is pretty freaking rad and exciting. Um, I think that overall, it just means that more people are going to be able to play together in like the scope of things. And people will, will be able to play where they're, pl- where they're most comfortable and happy because, you know, as a PC gamer, everyone's, most of my kids, when I say kids, I mean the kids that I work with, they're all like 90% are console. So when I'm like, oh, I'm a PC gamer, they're like, oh, like this, like they don't understand, <laughs> like, no. like, or like adults, like parents are like, oh, you're a gamer, like, 
<laughs> and I'm like, no, PC. <laughs> so I think this is such a cool like thing. I think this this is good, like opens up is going to open up so many doors. Of course, there's problems and stuff that they're running into, and there always is with big things like this. And I think that, but what's cool is in the articles that I was looking at, they're welcoming the challenge. And they're like, hey, we know this is a challenge. We know that there's going to be difficulties, but we're ready to work through them. And we want to be, we want to be this like force to be reckoned with in the community. And I'm like, miss, like not an Xbox fan. So for me to be saying this is like massive. Um, I think this is fantastic. So what do you guys think about this? Do you guys think that there's like potential big picture issues? Do you think like anything that might be a deal breaker for you guys? Anna, we're going to start with you. I was really excited by a lot of what Microsoft had to say about how possible they want it to be for gamers to play with each other on using different hardware. Um, I'm not too familiar with exactly what they're doing at this step, but from what I've heard from their most recent press conferences, I was excited about the implication on gamer culture from those things um because there's been a divide between like you said pc gamers and console gamers and anything that can be done to continue to make gamer culture yes. very inclusive is a win for me yes true i, I have to say i'm torn because i am what? a pc gamer at heart i'm a hardcore pc gamer but i have been semi-converted to I shouldn't say convert. I have been <laughs> subjected to the Xbox One because of my daughter and it's in the house. And certain games she'll get, like she got Destiny, she got Titanfall, you know, uh, COD. And I was like, let me try this controller thing that is so foreign to me. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, what's what's the Y button? Where's the, I mean, it's bad. She's like, mom, just put it down. Um, so I've been trying to get this thing under control, trying to learn it, trying to figure it out. So for the past three weeks, you know, I'm working really hard, spending almost two hours a week of time I don't have trying to figure out how to kill people in Titanfall because it makes me aggravated when they drop on me with their Titan and I get smashed or they shoot me in the face or when they walk right up to me and kick me and kill me. I'm like, this is wrong. So I've finally gotten a semi grasp on the four buttons, nothing else. Um, so I'm going to be really torn when I have the option to be like, oh, I, I can do this on a PC. I don't know. So I'm going to have to make some executive decisions in my life. This is could be altering for me. I'm not, yeah, come back to me in a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. I think it's, I think it's fantastic. And I think it's fantastic for multiple reasons. Uh, I think a lot of people have a preference, not necessarily for a platform, but a preference for controls I most definitely do not play FPS on PC. Like it, it's just impossible <laughs> for me. Like strafing with WASD, like uh uh, I'm done. I I will sit somewhere and I will just let you headshot me. It's fine. I don't care. <laughs> she just sits down. Like, you give me you give me a controller and I'm fine with it. Um, and I know that I can run controllers on my PC, but I find that it just doesn't often work as well and is as responsive is working it on like an Xbox. It's just not for me. Um, so I think this is fabulous because we'll have the ability to play with controls that we really enjoy based upon the game. Um, and I also think it's great because I prefer FPS on controllers and my roommate prefers them on PC. So we mm. can each buy the game and I can play it on the Xbox, and she can play it on the computer, and it works, and there's never an issue with it. Yeah. Um, and I think that's fantastic. Uh, I do worry about potential issues with coding, because um, I wonder if there are going to be some crossover issues with actually managing to merge the game at once. You know there is. We're going to go through that phase, um, and where everyone feels the right to rage out on social media and have a fit, because things aren't working according to plan. Guys, your developers are working hard to create something new and exciting for you. Please don't flame them all over social media. Um, give them the feedback, but you don't have to make it personal. I mean, come on, it's ridiculous. Some of these people feel so entitled to just rip somebody a new one and you know, maybe just maybe DDoS or whatever the case may be. Um, so I think that 
I think we're going to move over to, we'll move to um, Pixie's topic and then go to mine last. Okay. Uh, so I really love the game Don't Starve. I think it's so much fun. It's so <laughs> silly and so goofy, but I love it. And I have played it like millions of hours at this point, and I'm so excited because they just announced a shipwrecked expansion. So now you can take to the seas and try not to starve <laughs> on a boat. <laughs> um, when you put it that way, it sounds so fun. It's so <laughs> much fun. It's like, you can be on a boat, it, surrounded by water, not and not be stop. on a boat and potentially get dysentery. Like, this is Oregon. <laughs> Don't starve is the yeah. new yes! trail. Like, that's what it is. And it's that addictive. I love it. I'm so excited. <laughs> I haven't you know, played Don't Starve yet, and I really want to. You should. It's so good. You know, maybe we should play it and stream it. I think we should. It's a thing. Fun. I haven't played I am, it like the worst at that game. Really? Yeah. yeah when it came out. Play. Yeah. When it, when it came out, a fan got it for me. It was when I was streaming my six months of streaming uh, days, and I literally was like, "This is really bad. <laughs> like, I am so bad at that game." And like, I'm all about. It looks. I love the looks. It's a beautiful game. I'm all into the way that it looks. I love games like that. It kind of reminds me of Broken Age a little bit with the, the way that it's created. It looks killer, but I blow at it. Just being <laughs> honest. That would be fun to watch. <laughs> I don't know. I quickly switched games. I'm like, all Aww. right, guys. Well, I suck at this. Let's play something else that I can Come feel better on. I would love to see you stumble through it. That's what makes you better, right? Practice. I, I kept dying. There's no stumbling. I'm starving. <laughs> There was no stumbling, but I would try it on a boat. I agree with Anna. It sounds fun. Yeah, I would be bad at it too. So we could be bad together. It's all right. It's good. Can't, I might be worse than you. Never know. All right. So we're going to go over to my topic, which is Gamescom. So Anna knows something about this. Is this your first Gamescom this year going? Yeah, I've never been before. All right. Yeah, I haven't been yet. However, lots of people in the industry that we're all familiar with and probably swim in the same circles have been. Um, so, you know, if you're not familiar with Gamescom, it's like huge. Um, it's uh, August 5th through the 9th. You'll be able to see it on various social media. Well, I shouldn't say it's me. You'll be able to see it on the Twitter, but you'll be able to watch over on um, IGN. I think they're having a, a live stream and you will be able to see it on Twitch. I'm sure some other places, I'm not quite sure else yet, but check their website. Watch it on Twitch. That's where I'm going to be hosting. Yeah. Uh, oh, you're going to be hosting? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, All right. So Twitch. check it out over there. Um, over we'll be there. hosting as well. I'm sorry. I said over there. Over there. All right. I couldn't hear that. Um, so I want to talk about um just some of the studios are going to be over there so you got microsoft you got blizzard you got ea there's all kinds of big names going to be over there and one of the things that i have always wanted to see um and looking forward to going to uh games kind of video games live that music concert that they put on it is like amazing and if you don't know what that is basically they take a full-on orchestra and reproduce all the music from the games that we love, World of Warcraft and so forth and so on, as a symphony, and you bring everybody and anybody in your family there to watch as they play the videos on the screen and the orchestra plays out the music. I mean, it's cool. just mind boggling and it's probably a very emotional experience. Um, a lot of people walk away with saying that, thank you for allowing us to connect as a family. Um, you know, young kids who would never go to the symphony or an orchestra because they're like, ew, okay. old people music. And then people who just thought games were just you know, whatever, you're there for media, you're there for press, I don't really pay attention, I don't play, have found a new um, awakening with some of those uh, games and soundtracks. Um, it's one of the things that we, as gamers, sometimes takes for granted, the process of making those soundtracks, yeah. coming up with the music, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, Anna, what do you think? What are you looking forward to? And how excited are you? 
I don't even know what to look forward to. I hadn't heard of Video Games Live, and that sounds amazing. So now I'm going to have to check that out. And uh, the Twitch booth is really cool to be involved in because uh, a lot of developers will come there and I get to interview them about the game and everything. So the cool part is that I know I don't know yet what I'm going to be most excited about when I come back. Mm -hmm. That's always what kind of seems to happen. So I guess I'm excited for that. Man. So, uh, Holly, game's gone. Yeah, your name? Dead Island 2 is going to be talked about. It better be talked about. Um, so I didn't even like really know anything about Dead Island. And one of my, actually my best friend, Ashley, AKA Narcandy in the channel, mm -hmm. she was like, let's play Dead Island. So we did, and we played through them. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with this freaking game. <laughs> and we were just like ready for two. So I, I'm like beyond stoked on that. And I know we talked about this when we did our E3 episode still stoked uh for for honor really excited to see just how that's going to turn out and um just kind of you know you know those times when you go to e3 and then you miss an e3 and you're like but this e3 had such good games <laughs> kind of how i feel this year i'm like mm. i don't know about the year i went but this year like yeah <laughs> i felt that way too so, yeah so like I was like what honor, looking no. at the tv no. i know <sighs> Yeah. So Pix, what about you? I plead the fifth on this one. I never talk about what I'm I like I hate talking about what I'm excited for because the problem is, is when I do, I jinx myself <laughs> and anything that I'm excited for ends up being complete and utter garbage. Yeah, and right. I cry myself to sleep for like months on end. I know that feel. Yeah. Okay. We'll let you we'll let you slide on this one. All right. So it's getting to be about that time of the show. We're gonna roll into what we are playing and talk about the games that we're uh sucking at or doing really well or we think we're doing really well at um currently playing. So for me, I've been sucked into Titanfall, like there's nobody's business. I did play a little bit of Destiny this week. Um and I you know, I got the Tomb Raider, you know, like mega expansion pack. So I've been uh rocking that out and boy does it look good on the xbox one mm -hmm. i was like wow hey. you know because i played you know the we'll just put it this way the pc version with you put the disc in your computer mm -hmm. right so <laughs> the big difference from <laughs> what i'm playing now laura looks good um so <laughs> anna what are you playing uh heroes of the storm all the time <laughs> but outside <laughs> i mean that's pretty much all i play but uh i discovered a game that i did not expect to love as much as i did i just had i whooped and hollered i had such a good time uh playing duck game Do you guys play duck game duck it's game. No. i had that's the face i made when someone is it for pc like what, what, yeah. what is it on PC? i played it on pc i think it's also on consoles um it's made by adult swim games oh okay and, that's all you had yeah. to say and it it's very it's like 8-bit and it's very very simplistic graphics it's very much of like a kind of 90s throwback feel but it's very fast moving oh and i it's see like, it's on steam yeah it's so Ooh. fun you're you're a duck and then you can choose a weird head or a hat and then you just oh! go and try to collect guns and you try to shoot each other and each round lasts like 30 seconds or oh. or two i mean it's oh just we must play this fun yeah uh it's a really that good sounds like a, game. amazing yeah, yeah. Do they do they make like a, a a four pack where you can buy and give it to your friends because we must have it? Yeah, I don't know, but playing it with friends was the best experience. We were just screeching at each other. It was so fun. It, I have to have it now. Thank you. Yep. Good. Good <laughs> <Quit> it. <laughs> All right. So uh, Pixie, what you playing? Uh, so since I see died a miserable, sad death. Boo. <laughs> um. I've been playing a lot of Strife and a lot of Heroes of the Storm and oh, play with me. some like smite. really awful Smite play. Like, I really love smite. smite play, which is why I have not been streaming it. Um, <laughs> I'll play with you. I'll carry you. I got uh, you. But I'm actually really getting into Strife um, on the whole. I like I like the meta of 221. It's kind of a Dota ish meta because Dota is 2 1 2. Uh, and then you have roamers. Uh, but I like the whole idea of like a duo mid. It's not like a mid laner and a support like league. Well, you know, we still have connections over there. So if you're streaming it, let me know. 
Will do. All right. Holly. So I'm doing a shameless plug because you can see what I'm playing because now I'm actually alive on YouTube and I make at least two frag videos a week. And apparently the one I posted last night, people are like dying over. I really didn't feel like it was that good. There is a 4K, um, the, it, the, last night's was Counter-Strike, but there's a 4K at the end with an op that people are like, but I'm known for my opping. So you can check out my frag videos there. Um, hey, let me stop notice. you real quick. So if, if we don't know what opping is, could you please explain it for the <laughs> class? So it's a sniper rifle or like a gun with a scope. So if you've played any first person shooter with a scoping gun and every game I play, I'm a opper or like some type of scope weapon. It's just like what I'm good at. And I don't know why. Um, another game I've been playing is Dirty Bomb, um, which I've been playing with my bestie, um, Ashley. And um, it's there's a frag video on my channel with that as well. And you'll see I'm using a sniper rifle. Um, and it was my first day using it. And I was like wrecking kids. So I love scope weapons. Um, so. I mean, it's crazy because a month ago I was like, eh, Counter-Strike, never playing again. It sucks. But my fans were like, come back, play with us. You're a Counter-Strike person, come back. And I mean, I have to be honest, I am having a good time. Um, but I like Dirty Bomb when I'm like really pissed with all the things I dislike <laughs> about CSGO. So that's when I hop on Dirty Bomb. And um, I bought ARC because I sold yeah. a skin that I had and I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like so disappointed. I'm like, I sold this skin and I got ARC. So I put in for a refund and Steam refunded me because I only played it nice. for 34 minutes. And I just didn't like it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm super bummed because I really wanted a dinosaur pet. Now you guys know Dirty Bomb you can play for free. So if you want to play it, just go oh, free. Dirty Bomb. It's a, it's a good game. Um, I, I uh, myself will play any FPS as a sniper, so I didn't know what I was doing. Thank you for clearing that up for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just play for fun. I don't play competitively. Um, but that is a highlight of my gameplay is to just shoot somebody square in the head from nowhere coming out. It feels so, like, good. so good. Um, mind you, my daughter hunts me down if we play together, so we can't <laughs> play with her. No Molly Squid Cheese, not coming for your mom. It's not fair, it's not funny. Um, so this is the time where we wrap up the show with shout outs and shout outs are exactly that. You're going to give a shout out to anyone, uh, and everyone that has, uh, got you where you are here today and, or where you're going to be tomorrow or, um, just pissed you off last week. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we're going to start off with, uh, Anna shout outs for you. Well, shout outs to good game agency. Um, and Twitch and Evil Geniuses and all of the affiliated companies that have now become one. Uh, they, they definitely <laughs> got me to where I am today. And then, of course, to Misclicks. You can find them at misclicks.com. And that's M-I-S-S-C-L-I-K-S. No C at the end. It's okay. Uh, we got the links down there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So please do check them out and see if you like any of those shows. We're trying to build as many as we can for you. And we're looking for feedback as well. So anytime that you are thinking, I would like to watch a show about this, or I think that you should change this about your network, please feel free to reach out on Twitter or anywhere else. Um, and shout, shout out to my boo. My boo right there. Aww. Oh, boo. Aww, he's making a face. Yeah. Boo sitting <laughs> over there. <laughs> he Mine doesn't even come near me when I'm <laughs> <laughs> um and yeah actually just like specifically the founders of, of miss clicks of one of them just won an any for her software i'm really proud of her so go check awesome. out that and check that out but um awesome. thank you is that gonna be on the blog by the way uh the blog is not functional right now okay but it is soon to be like the in the next in couple of weeks All right. there will, there we'll will keep be coming back on the misclicks blog yes but on twitter is the place to find miss clicks info right now so you can you can find that on on twitter but I do want to finish it out by thanking you guys. I really appreciate you having me in this. It's been a really great conversation. I appreciate you all. Thank you. And we're going to go over to Miss Pixie. Uh, so yeah, huge thanks to you for being on the show. It's been absolutely fabulous. Um, so a shout out for the developers of Strife. Uh, please, please, please keep it going. Like, it's so good. Um, and shout outs to... Ruby Rose, 
potentially sci-fi new tv <laughs> good uh shout outs to sci-fi if they can actually manage to not screw this up for me it would ruin my life and i will cry thank you <laughs> i appreciate it all right we're gonna go to miss holly so Anna, I just want to thank you so much for being on the show too. And I've been like dying for an esports like time. So I've just been freaking repped Yay. tonight. I was excited since the moment I heard you're going to be on. And I just feel like you're such a fantastic voice and such not, not only an inspiration to the young girls, but to myself and I know to everyone here at the table. So thank you so much for all that you're doing. Um, and shout out to the Miss USA organization since we talked <laughs> about you all night. Um, so holler on that. And um, in the chat, my bestie, Nara Candy and Spooky, thank you guys so much for being here. And then also guys, just thank you so much in chat tonight for being so like pumped and commenty and everything. It makes it so much fun when you guys are lively and interactive. Um, and then I'm not going to thank my husband because he just doesn't care about <laughs> anything because he's just Counter-Strike world over there. Um, but I will shout out to my mom because if it wasn't for my mom driving me to land tournaments at the age of 12 and being so supportive of my gaming when it like really wasn't a thing, I would not be here. So yes, plus two mom. <laughs> you go mom. Awesome. Awesome. I'm gonna give shout outs to Miss Anna for coming on the show. Um, and she, when we asked her, she was like, yes, please, which uh, made us all feel good. And I immediately um, DM Holly and she like caps locked me. She was so excited. <laughs> um, I really think it is very important for us to have people like you on the show to have these types of conversations to show that we do care about what's going on in our industry. We're not just sitting back and partying and going to convention to convention and um, not really seeing what's going on in our industry. There are those of us out here who really are looking at what's going on and, and want to make some influence and some change. That being said, I'd like to give a shout out to um, my young mini, Molly Squid Cheese on the Twitter, who inspires me to keep doing what I'm doing every day by challenging me for every little thing as a teenager that could possibly be um, in the world um, to make sure that I'm on my toes. Um, as well as a uh, shout out to uh, our members of our advisory board for Lort. You know who you are, I'm not gonna name your names. Thank you so much for taking the time and um, value your opinion and your insight to what's going on um, and helping us out. Um, if you guys are interested in going over to the website, check out, see what we got going on. We'd love your feedback as well on the new look, new digs. Um, and uh, my last shout out goes to my dog, Bentley over here, who is laid out dead asleep. You guys can't see, but it's so cute because his little paws are up in the air. He's sleeping with all four up. I'm like, I don't even understand. Um, and snoring. Hopefully you couldn't hear it at the show. Um, oh, there's a puppy. I knew it was coming. <laughs> yeah, and shout outs to Tiff and Captain Redbeard um, on your staycation. You guys uh, are a perfect couple and we hope years and years to come of happiness and we'll see you when you get back. And with that- and Ian. Yes, Ian. Ian, shout out to oh, Ian. The ginger bear back there doing his thing. Um, oh, we're gonna see another. We're gonna see uh, another baby. He's dead asleep. Look, Techie. Yeah. Say hi, Techie. <laughs> you know, we love it when you tweet us your fur babies, you guys. We love them. Um, so, with that being said, we are about to roll the credits for the show. And what we do is what, ladies? Dance it out. Dance it out. So here we go, Anna. You gotta dance it out with us. Ian, okay. roll those credits. And there's no music. We keep forgetting to put music in, but we got music in our own heads. Dance yeah. it out. Do you think? <laughs> that dog looks so scared. <laughs> Dance it out. Now shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. I'm gonna shake right out the chair. Thank you guys for coming for this week's short live. See you next week with Trisha Hershberger and our next guest. And I think we're out. Techie, you're such a good boy. I love you. All right, so thanks for hanging out for that long show. Yeah, thanks for having me.